Yeah, I hate to uh, open up the press conference with, um, you know, bad news, but it is with a heavy heart that, um, you know, we, we pass on our condolences to the Daniels family, and, and we lost a great one with Ed, um, lost his battle here um, the other day, um, and I think we all know him as a passionate um, sports broadcaster here in the state of Louisiana, and, and the work that he did um, was uh, was incredible. Uh, whether it was high school, college, or the pros, uh, he was. Last time I, I got a chance to be with him, he was at uh, SEC Media Day, and uh, unlike some of you elitist in here, he was carrying his own camera. Um, I'm kidding, but you know he had his camera and. Uh, you know, he was wait He was actually waiting for a couple of the guys, but that's who he was. And um, you know, I only knew him for f a couple of years, but you know, uh, certainly for those that knew him longer, um, he, he certainly will be missed. On a brighter note, we had uh, some graduates yesterday. Uh, I'm really proud of them. Uh, we had, uh, you know, four in particular, uh, and you know, like anything else. Um, you know, it's important that we, we take a moment and, and talk about them as well. We talk so much about championships, but, you know, we want to talk about, you know, the graduates and, and Miles Frazier, Jacoby and Guillory, uh, Braden Swinson and, and Slade Roy were four of our graduates that we're really proud of. And um, they uh, were able to graduate yesterday and spend some time with their family. And um, we're certainly excited for them. And, uh, Again, what they're going to be able to do with that degree from LSU is going to open up doors for them for the rest of their lives. So um, just a couple of notes there that I wanted to pass on to everybody. So thanks uh, for uh, hanging with me on that. You know, today was, uh, you know, our sixth day in a row. And as you can imagine, you know, the workload uh, increased, uh, the exposure outside increased to the point where, you know, we really wanted this to be, you know, uh, a big work day. You know, we spent about 45 minutes inside, about an hour and 25 minutes or more outside, uh, culminating with, a, you know, a lot of work at, at the end. And, you know, you saw, um, you know, I think our defense uh, improve, um, you know, through uh, the, the, obviously the spring, but even more so in preseason camp. Uh, and, and today, you know, offensively, you know, we were uh, struggling in certain aspects because we had some young players out there uh, playing. You know, you had, uh, you know, Weston Davis matched up against Braden Swinson. There's going to be a mismatch there. Um, you know, you're going to have um, Paul Mubanga inside uh, against Jacoby and Gilry. There's going to be some issues there. Um, but it's, it, it's also how you build your, your football team's depth. You know, you need to have you know, those sandpaper moments, if you will, for the offense as, as, as they kind of, you know, come into their own and, and build the depth. Um, you know, we know about Emery. Uh, you know, we know, uh, you know, what he's going to be able to do. You know, we wanted to see Delhi at the center position and, and gives us more depth and versatility at that position. Uh, so we moved some guys around on the offensive line today. Um, you know, if you're looking at it as a fan, you probably said, wow, that didn't look very good today. But if you're looking at it as a, as a coach, um, you know, you're, you're able to coach off it, teach off it, uh, and, and help those younger guys uh, prepare and get better. So, um, and, and look, you know, as I told our football team, it, it's, it's a great coaching experience as well for our staff and my staff on the offensive side of the ball, uh, if we ever get into these kinds of situations, um, you have to play um, a game knowing that you may have a potential mismatch. And then you have to adjust accordingly. If, if we have a freshman tackle out there going against an all SEC performer, we got to help his ass. We got to be able to do something. We can't just call plays as if that doesn't exist. That exists. Um, you know, if we have a, a, a potential situation where, you know, we may have a problem blocking a particular guy, we have to have answers for that. If we have a situation where we're having some problems picking up protections, you know, we have to be able to look at it from the sideline and maybe call it from the sideline. So, 
you know, there's, there's teaching going on all the time, and it's not just, you know, one-sided. Um, there's a lot going on there, and a lot of people are learning on a day-to-day -day basis, and uh, from my perspective, um, those are all good times for me relative to, you know, getting where we need to get to, and that is being prepared for USC when we kick it off uh, in a couple of weeks. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. Uh, yeah, hey, Coach. Uh, we didn't see uh, DJ Chester out there. Is, is he doing okay? And then just kind of your, your observations of how Tyree Adams did kind of with that first team today. So we've had a bug going around, um, the lo uh, a lower GI bug through the O-line, and Emery was affected greatly from it today. You saw he was in and out. He probably shouldn't have been out there, but you couldn't keep him from practice. Um, that's what he was suffering from. We sent him home. Um, I don't know how uh, Whit Weeks and West Weeks made it through practice. They had a similar bug. You know, we've sprayed the offices, we've cleaned them down, um, but you know, we're fighting that right now with with a number of guys. Um, the second follow up was. You know, I thought he did some good things. Um, you know, we're bouncing him around. He's playing. You know, he's playing tackle and guard, and, and so, you know, I, I think. You know, we like his athleticism. You know, we like him uh, right now in, in a, uh, I think, a developmental uh, role where, you know, I think he's probably the next guy. Um, he's still got a ways to go for consistency. But he's going to flash. Uh, we just got to get that to be uh, more consistent. Hey, Coach. Uh, just Firstly, how's Chris Hilton doing after he got banged up a little bit? Towards I think he'll be all right. It was an ankle. It, it wasn't a uh, – Owen talked to me after. He said, you know, I, I think it'd be best we just keep him out. So didn't seem to be, you know, high ankle or something that would be affecting him for long term, much more of about a, a precautionary ankle right now. And it seemed like uh, Garrett Nussmeyer had a pretty good day at camp today. How, how have you seen him progress throughout camp so far? Yeah, I thought he did some pretty good things. I mean – you know, there were a couple of things in, in, in pressures that, you know, he thinks he's got 52 timeouts. He takes timeouts when he wants to take a timeout. I think he's got to work through a couple of things out there where, you know, decision making relative to some pressure looks that I want him to get better at. But I thought his process was really good today. He stayed within himself. Um, he looked under control in, in the situations that we created for him today. And I think when he does that and, and his drop is uh, in rhythm, uh, he's, he's really good. So um, I thought we saw a good version of him. I think there's a better version of him out there. Hey, Coach, uh, up to the left. How important is a guy like Garrett Dellinger to the offensive line in situations where maybe you need him to slide or move with his past experience? And uh, have you guys bonded at all over your past experience in Michigan at all? Um, you know, we know each other, and, and we've had a relationship since we've gotten here over that because I recruited him. Um, so we knew each other like my first day here. Um, you know, that, that was a, a guy that I knew. So... Uh, you know, I think we've we've had a relationship since day one, so that's kind of been nice. But uh, having him as a guy that can play a couple of positions for us has been um, really important. You know, on that offensive line, because now now you know that you got a guy that's got a lot of experience, a lot of snaps, played a lot of football, a lot of winning football for you. Um, you know, the snapping doesn't come easy to him, but he's gotten really. Uh, much more proficient at it. Uh, he was good today with it. Uh, a couple of low snaps, but I think he's feeling much more comfortable with it. Coach, let's talk about it being movie day soon. I know heading into fall practice, uh, there was this kind of an outside expectation that maybe you guys would be trying out a lot of different, different things in the defensive back room, just that there'd be a lot of competition. And so far, you've kind of seen the same group of starters and again today. So um, I'm just kind of wondering, how are you evaluating that position uh, have you seen any movement? Do you, are you waiting for someone to earn it, or like, what's the status there? No, I think I think what you're doing is is you know you're giving a lot of guys an opportunity. I, I think we read too much into the first group that goes out there. Um, look, there's going to be injuries, and and that's part of this game. You, you have to have as much confidence as the next guy going in. If a guy you know pulls a hamstring in the first series. 
that next guy has to be somebody that can go in and play at the highest level. So, you know, I, I think it's much more about any guy that's getting a first or second team rep is a guy that we believe that can, can come in and, and help us win a championship. So I think if you don't see him in the first or second rotation, you know, too deep, too deep and, and maybe a swing player, then, then he's probably not ready yet. Um, and I say yet because, you know, there are some guys that, that kind of begin to blossom a little bit later. But whoever you've kind of seen out there in the back end of the defense at this point, those are the guys that we're trying to get ready for USC. Uh, Jacoby and Guillory, what have you seen from him? He took – or when you got here to Baton Rouge, he was already here. What have you seen from his growth, his progression, and what do you expect to see from him this year? Well, he wasn't a very good football player when we got here. He was, uh, you know, technically, um, you know, I would say out of control. Um, you know, he, he did not play with uh, the kind of discipline necessary to play the position at a high level. And, and consequently, you know, he, he didn't play a whole lot of football. Um, I think his maturity and I think his understanding that he needed to be very good at his technique and leverage. And, and I think last year he figured that out. And because he's so strong and explosive and can play with great leverage, he's now taken those uh, strengths of his and put himself in a position to be an outstanding football player and continue, can play at the next level because of it. So with great strength and lower body strength and great technique, he's now put himself in a position to, to, to be a guy that we count on. I think at the same time, there's been parallel tracks with him off the field in that we just talked about him being a graduate. Um, I think his emotional maturity has allowed a lot of this to, to happen as well. Uh, when I first got here, he was not in control of his emotions. Um, you know, there would be times where he just would go off the, 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 the deep end in terms of uh, not being able to control himself. And, and he has handled himself very well emotionally. And because of that, I think we've seen this player ascend the way he has. Coach, you talked a little bit about, you know, the tight ends recently. Um, so given the options you have in the tight end room, do you think we might see a little bit more usage of 12 personnel um, this year than we did last year? Oh, without question. I think you'll see 12. I think you'll see 13. Um, you know, I think just watching the scrimmage passively, you can't help but notice 88 and 14. You know, we know about Mason, but it is 14, right? Tredes? Yeah. 88 and 14. Uh, I want to make sure I get his number right at least. Um, but those two guys in particular, um, you know, really show. Um, you know, they're young. I mean, you know, Tredez was standing around the pile and got rolled up. I mean, you know, you can't be standing around. You got to be, you know, on body. But they're learning, you know. But they are so talented. And, and I think, I think um, you know, Pimpton has really kind of taken that next step where, you know, he's sticking his nose in there aggressively, uh, run blocking, uh, catching the ball. And, and I, I, I see Tredez, you know, making progress as well. So I'm excited about – who wouldn't be excited about those two guys? I mean, they are um, unique individuals in terms of what they can do in the passing game, and, and they're really coming along in, in the run game. Coach, a lot of fans are going to have to make the choice between donating to TAF or the NIL Collective this year. Which one do you think helps your team more, and how do you balance the two? Well, as I understand it, you'll you'll get um, you'll get points by donating to the NIL um, through TAF. So uh, I think that there is uh, there is a way to kind of funnel both of those together now, and I think that that's what this is all starting to begin to look like. Right? That um, I think the NCA would love to get rid of collectives. Uh, whether that can hold up into the courts, I, 
I have a hard enough time with my own job, right, to figure out as a head coach. I don't know what's going to happen in the courts, but that would be, you know, a dream to, to, to get rid of collectives and, and have everything run through the universities, right? And if you, if you give to uh, the NIL at LSU, you get points to get upgrades on your seats and, you know, a tax deduction, which we don't have right now. But I think that's coming. I, I think it's just natural in its progression of everything that we've seen from revenue sharing in 2025 that that's kind of the next iteration. So although that might be the case right now, I think we're starting to move closer towards um, if you do make a donation um, that you're going to be able to see that through TAF go to an NIL. Hey, Brian, and you have 33 years. Have you had an offensive line that's got as much potential and uh, as many starts as these guys have had? And also, when, when did you think they could be special, like if they stayed together, like mid-22, mid, uh, end of 22? Yeah, I think it happened when, you know, when, when we decided to start the two freshmen, right, you know, you knew you had them for three years. And, and then their progression, you, you knew you had two bookends. And, and now it was just a matter of what kind of continuity were, were we going to get at the guard uh, and center position, you know. And so I, I thought that once that decision was made, it was made with a sense of let's try to keep the band together here for a few years and, and really look at um, three years of, of really – top-notch offensive line play, with the culmination hopefully being this year. Um, we still got to go out and play. We got to execute. But, um, you know, this is going to be an outstanding offensive line. They got to go do it, right? Looks good in paper. Uh, but this is going to be a really good group. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've had, I mean, you know, we had a group with, um, at Notre Dame with, uh, McGlinchey, you know, who was a first rounder, Quentin Nelson, who was a first rounder, um, you know, th that that group was was very very similar, um, you know, where they they controlled the line of scrimmage, you know, you you owned the line of scrimmage in short yardage, you 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 were able to convert and hold on to the football when you needed it, and. You saw a lot of running of the football today, you know, and I, I think we're going to be able to, when it's, you know, when it's those tough times, we're going to be able to rely on that offensive line to convert for us. But, you know, I would say, you know, the 17, 18 uh, offensive line that I had at Notre Dame had a lot of similarities. Hey, Coach. Um, Amal Bro has been getting a lot of reps with the second team defense. How has he progressed uh, throughout the fall, and how has his transition been from moving from the edge to the inside? Well, none of it would have been possible uh, unless he put on 30 plus pounds. So it starts with his physical development, and he's done a terrific job. Uh, Dr. Frakes, our nutritionist, um, Jake Flint, strength and conditioning. Um, there's a team here that has done a great job of taking a young man that was committed and dedicated to uh, putting on the right amount of weight and doing it the right way. I mean, he's still lean, and, you know, he's close to 290 pounds. You know, he came in somewhere in the 250 range, so I think he's closer to 40 pounds in terms of weight. He is um, smart. He is accountable. And he's a guy that's going to be in the right place at the right time. Now, he gets thrown out, you know, on some double teams that, you know, he, 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 we'd like him to be a little bit bigger. But in time, he's going to be a guy that we're going to talk about. Um, but, you know, you want to free up some of those linebackers, let them run. Um, those defensive tackles got to be in the right gap at the right time. And, and you can count on this kid. He's going to be in the right place at the right time. And so he brings that accountability and, and reliability and trust that Bo's looking for. And um, he's going to play this year. Brian, when you think about day one to now, if you had a big concern or something that you were curious about day one, how much, maybe where have you seen that big progress? And if I could a second, um, when do you all start prep for, for USC? Will you start that next week? 
Yeah, we'll start Tuesday. We'll begin exchanging uh, teams uh, to give us a look at uh, USC on Tuesday and, and, and kind of duplicate two weeks in a row of a game week preparation. So we'll go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday into a, a kind of a game bench control situation next week and then do it again. So, you know, kind of back to back weeks, if you will. So if you think of it, next week is kind of the off week that you would normally have, your bye week, um, where you would do a little work on your opponent um, and then leading into the, the game week. Um, where are we from practice one to right now is the question in terms of overall. Is, is that what the substance of the question? Where and in going into practice one, maybe you had some trepidation where you've seen progress in a certain spot. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like the way our corners have held up on the on the outside. You know, I, I think you know, anytime you you know you go into a year, you 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 want to make sure you eliminate big plays. And and one of the thing that we all lived through last year was too many big plays on the defensive side of the ball. We we've eliminated those big chunk plays, um, and that was job one. Um, I think for, for me, as, as we continue to progress, um, you know, we, we, have to, we have to clearly, you know, find ourselves, you know, defensively, you know, what we're going to look like, um, you know, up front. You know, we're still kind of moving guys around inside, uh, but we've got five guys that we're rotating in. I think our edge is going to be pretty good. I mean, I, I like what we're doing on the edge. Um, but you, you saw what we saw today. I mean, our pass rush is going to be, you know, manufactured. It's not going to be just four down, pin your ears back. I mean, we're going to – it's going to be nickels and safeties and linebackers and different guys coming from different pressures. And that's what Blake does. So um, I think I got a better sense of that, where the pressures are coming from. Our corners can hold up on the outside. If that continues to be the case, I feel pretty good about that. And then from an offensive standpoint, just um, you know, clean up a little bit of the execution. And, and then kind of let's begin this next week focusing on what we do well. You know, I, I think the last few days have been um, – you know, we've been painting with a broad brush. I mean, we're trying to do everything, you know. Uh, we need to just focus on what we're going to do, and that is run the ball, take some shots, get the ball out quickly uh, to our playmakers, and uh, move to the next play. Good? Oh, we got one more. Uh, I was just going to ask about Harold Perkins at Gunner on special teams. I guess what's the, the mindset? I mean, obviously one of the best athletes in the country out there, but then – Today, it looked like Blake Baker and him were on the comms together during a team period. I guess, what was the decision maybe having the communication with him and then also him at Gunner? Well, he's a green dot. So, you know, we, uh, you know, we're, we're just, because we're going into a scrimmage today, we used that period of time to kind of um, get him up to speed on some of the communication because we hadn't done a lot of work with him with a green dot. Um, we have been using uh, Greg Penn um, quite a bit. Uh, but, you know, Greg could come off the field at some time, you know, in some of our packages. And um, so we wanted to make sure we had another guy. Um, Greg, Greg knows all the calls. So it was really just trying to get him uh, up to speed on on some of the calls uh, with the green dot, and and he he got he gets split out if, if we go to a, a spread to his side uh, in a rugby punt. So it won't be something that we do all the time. It it, it, it will be uh, rugby punt to his side. So it, it will be uh, a specific. He won't be out there all the time. All right. Thank you.